Okay, values. Uh, values is a basic convention. It's about what is right, what is good and desirable. So something, uh, anything that is uh, positive, that is something good, consider is valuable or something value. So value system. Uh, when we talk about value system, we talk about ranking values in term of intensity and also important. So uh, when uh, when we say uh, what is your value system, we tend to say our value system based on the importance and also intensity of the values. When we talk about values, for example, values, uh, for example, um, hardworking, uh, diligence, uh, uh, concern, caring, those are the values. So why values are important? Because why values can affect our behavior. So the way we behave, or behave is actually influenced of uh, is influenced by our values. So values lay the foundations for understanding attitudes and also motivation, behavior, and so on. So I draw the gut diagrams here. As you can see, our behavior or action is based or is originates or is influenced by values. And values influence our attitude towards something, whether it is favorable attitude towards something or in favorable attitude towards some things and this attitude influence our behavior for example if we values um for example if we values uh studying early so uh, studying early is very important than study last minute for example so if we value this kind of things and then our attitude showing in favorable uh, towards this uh, thing that we values normally our action also in line with that kind of values so if our values uh, uh, if uh, is different from our attitudes and then it will not show up on our behavior uh, in other words if our values is inconsistent with our attitude is inconsistent with behavior it can be cause of uh, cognitive dissonance so cognitive dissonance if there is inconsistency between values attitudes and action normally in general as a human being values uh, uh, is normally uh, in line with our attitudes and behavior even though sometimes there are some uh, uh, some non-alignment but in general we are talking about the general the universal I mean the, the general uh, in the general terms so in the majority perspective values good values lead to good attitudes good attitudes look, uh, will lead to good uh, actions or good behavior for example if we value smoking we consider smoking is something you know nothing wrong it can give us maybe uh, motivation concentration focus and so on so our attitude towards smoking also positive and then our behavior we tend to smoke if our values we did not like uh, smoking because smoking is not good for health smoking is bad for uh, society for environment for example so our attitude also have a negative uh, attitude towards smoking and we do not smoke if let's say we uh, think that uh, smoking is not good for our health for our society for our environment and we also have negative attitude towards smoking but we are smoking so that's mean uh, we is is not consistency between values attitude and behavior that one is considered cognitive dissonance but however in general as a human being normally is consistency based on the theory consistency our values if our values is positive our attitude also positive towards something that we values uh, and then our action also in line with what we think is good about uh, the positive about attitudes and values so there are two types of values in the textbook is mentioned there are many types of uh, values but is uh, narrowed down into two that means generalized divided into two terminal values and instrumental values so when we talk about terminal normally when we talk about terminal we thought uh, uh, we talk about the end stations the station or the end one the the, the end uh, station so here terminal values is a desirable end state of existence that means desirable values desirable values that we want to achieve the end one the, the outcome instrumental values is something that uh, could bring us to achieve these terminal values <coughs> for example here 
is defined in the textbook instrumental values is the preferred modes of behavior or means to achieve the terminal values. So terminal values, uh, for example, uh, innovation, efficiency, this is the outcome or the, the effects that we really want to achieve, the values that we, the effects that we want to achieve in terms of values. Here is the cost, that means the, the way the instrument to bring uh, this uh, uh, end uh, state. So in order to make it uh, simple and understandable, consider instrumental value as an instrument car, for example, instrument to bring you to the destination. So the destination is the terminal values. Terminal values, the destination or the outcome is efficiency. We want to, uh, to have this efficiency, effectiveness, excellent innovation. So these are the, ter the, the terminal ends or the station that we want to, to, to achieve. An instrument, uh, instrument or instrumental values is where uh, the values that are important in order to achieve these terminal values. This is uh, how uh, it is very simple this way. So terminal val uh, instrumental values is like a car. So these values will be able to uh, will be able to make sure that the the end or the terminal values could be achieved. So that's how I uh, hope you understand this. So moving to person job fit is uh, the fits between um, personality traits of yours and also the, the characteristic of the job. So uh, there are many uh, personality traits and there are many jobs, uh, different jobs. For example, if you are if you are accountants, what kind of, uh, if, if you want to become accountant, for example, or if you want to become a manager, what kind of jobs or characteristic of job that is needed uh, to, to perform, to effectively perform the job. So you need to have certain uh, personality traits that are important to achieve uh, those jobs. For example, here, uh, for, for job as an assembly line workers, you need to have this kind of personality traits. If the job as a social worker or teacher, you need to have this kind of personality trait. So when we talk about person job fit, we talk about the fit between the job and the personality. So if the job, uh, the characteristic of the job fit the characteristic of personality, then uh, the, it's, uh, it's fulfill the person job fit. So next one is person organization fit where uh, the personality of the person or the values of the person fit the organization, not uh, not the job per se, but the organization as a whole. So uh, some uh, employees, they leave the job, then they leave the organization because the, the jobs and the, the organization do not fit with their values or do not fit with their personality. So uh, it is important to find the, the personality traits that fits with the organization. For example, for organization, uh, they are they are focusing on team oriented culture. They need to have the person with high on extraversion. Extraversion means a talkative, sociable, and so on. For the organization that characterized uh, characterized by supportive organizational climate, they mean the the organizations are kind of supportive among their members, among their employees. They need to have employees with high on agreeableness personality traits. So this is very important uh, as in order for the employees to work well in this kind of organization, they need to have high on this characteristic or this personality traits. And also for the organization that emphasize on innovations rather than standardization. Innovation, they mean they 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 uh, encourage uh, creativity, they encourage innovative ideas and so on. Standardized, they just use the same routine work. They do not really encourage creativity. So for the organization that emphasize on innovations, so they need to have employees with high on openness to experience. That means they, they love challenging, they love ideas, they, they need to come up with the creative and so on. So this kind of personality fit well with the organization that's focusing on innovation. That's referring to person organization fit. 
So there are also other fits that so dimension of fits that normally uh, found in the organization in management person group fit where uh, this referring to the <clears throat> to the personality or values of the persons whether they fit with the team or the group in the organization because sometimes in the organization they focusing on teamwork or uh, or, or, or work team or group team for example so if this kind of organizations are focusing on team they need to have employees uh, who have this kind of personality that fit with the team and also sometimes employees work with their supervisors they've been supervised by their managers so the personality and also the values of the employees subordinate must also fit with the uh, personality and values of the supervisor if they have clash of personality between those two so if they have clash between uh, of personality and values uh, between uh, employees and supervisor employees tend to have lower job satisfaction because uh, you know when you have a clash of personality traits or clash of personality types and values you tend to dissatisfied more with your supervisor so this affect your job that means your performance is uh, decreasing or reducing and uh, effective uh, negatively on your performance and your uh, overall performance and organization of performance. So when we talk about values, uh, there are study being done uh, by Hofstede. Uh, he come up with the uh, five elements of values, power, distance, individual versus collectivism masculinity versus femininity, uncertainty avoidance, long term versus short term. So basically power distance are uh, in the in certain culture, the gap between leaders and followers are big. And so power distance, sorry, uh, again, a uh, power distance is uh, the gap between leaders and followers are big. That means the followers cannot simply criticize their leaders. So that's power distance. Individualism versus collectivism where certain culture they focusing more on individualistic uh, values uh, certain cultures like in, in asian they focusing more on collectivism uh, values or collectivism culture where they focusing more on the family and then on the uh, groups and so on masculinity versus femininity with certain cultures uh, they they, they uh, emphasize more on certain values like a masculinity values like a manly values and certain culture, they're focusing more on having femininity values such as caring, loving, and so on. So uh, it's also based on the values, whether you, you tend to have this kind of values, then you belong to masculinity culture type of values uh, or femininity types of values. Others is uncertainty avoidance. Certain culture, they do not likes uh, having uncertainty certain culture they prefer to have uncertainty because this may be uh, give the, them more motivation to work harder so it depends on certain culture like certain culture in Malaysia for example we do not like to have uncertainty uncertainty so we have high uncertainty avoidance and in certain culture they have low uncertainty uh, avoidance and in certain culture also they prefer long term instead of short term orientation so depend on the culture uh, some culture are different in terms of their orientation so that's basically uh, how uh, five values dimensions uh, that's discussed about these five uh, by value. So further uh, explanation detail you can refer to textbook. There's also study about globes uh, that have been done about assessing culture also. Uh, this is a study been done uh, on a hundreds more than 825 organizations involved 62 countries. So the, the variable also similar to uh, Hofstede uh, but they added some new values. So uh, this is part of the culture study of uh, culture that updates Hofstede uh, research. So that's it.